Hi everyone, my name is Jonathan Van Dusen, and I'm a higher education specialist in the Education and Research Group at Esri Canada. In this video, we're going to take a look at user interface design for mapping applications, such as the web mapping apps that you might create using ArcGIS Online. Creating effective user interfaces is crucial, both to allow your users to accomplish tasks effectively, and also for them to have a pleasant overall experience. We'll take a look at the overall topic of user interface design and some of the principles involved in this, as well as some things to keep in mind while developing mapping apps in particular. This video is the first resource in our learning path on user interface design. So there's a quote that I always like to keep in mind while I'm designing interfaces, and it comes from Bill Buxton, who's a human-computer interaction researcher at Microsoft. And the idea is that everything, as in every method that you use to interact with technology, is best for something and worst for something else. And the trick is knowing what is what, for what, when, for whom, where, and most importantly, why. In other words, when we design and develop an app, we need to keep the who, what, when, where, and why in mind, and use these to inform all of our design decisions. For example, if you're creating an interface, when would you use checkboxes versus radio buttons? You might already know the difference just from having used these. You would use checkboxes when you want users to be able to select multiple options, and you would use radio buttons when you only want them to select one option. And then you might also have drop-down boxes where users can choose one option from a longer list, or toggle switches which immediately turn a setting on or off. But the idea here of everything being best for something and worst for something else also extends to bigger questions, like what sort of app you build in the first place. Will the user need to use a mouse, a keyboard, a touchscreen, or their voice? What sort of functionality do you include? And what do you prioritize in the interface? So this is one idea that we'll keep in mind over the rest of this video and for future tutorials in this learning path. And as we get started, it's helpful to keep some definitions in mind. Sometimes the terms UX and UI are used interchangeably, but there are some important differences between them. The user interface is the specific tool that you interact with while using the program. For most programs and apps that we use nowadays, this will be a graphical user interface, or a GUI. But it can also be an audio or speech-based interface, like when you're talking to a digital assistant, or a text-based interface, like if you're working with a command line tool. One of the points that's often made about UI design is that a user interface is how the user and the program communicate with each other. So if you're a GIS user, you can think about UI design as being sort of like how you design a map in order for the map to communicate something to the map reader. And so we can talk about how effective a UI design is in terms of its usability. In Jacob Nielsen's definition, this includes learnability, how easy it is to use the program the first time, the efficiency of completing tasks, memorability, or being able to remember how to use the app when coming back to it, as opposed to having to relearn it each time, ensuring that the app helps prevent users from making errors and allows them to recover from errors, and finally, whether the interface is satisfying to use. For UX, or user experience, this is defined as a broader concept compared to UI, since it encompasses all aspects of the end user's interaction with the program. This can include things outside of the actual user interface, like the marketing and documentation that users will come across, and it also considers whether the program meets the needs of its users, and whether the overall experience is pleasurable. So not just focusing on developing all of the individual features that need to be included. The user interface design is one component of the user experience, but it requires a larger design process to make sure that the design helps provide a good user experience. This process includes user research, where you get a sense of users' needs for the program, whatever frustrations they might be experiencing with what they're currently using, and where and when and how they'll need to use the new program. Once you've learned more about your users, you can start to work on the design using sketches, wireframes, and prototypes 
which we'll talk about in the next video. These let you experiment with ideas and improve the design before you start to develop the actual program. And with usability testing, you can test the design with users by asking them to complete some example tasks with the program, or even with the prototypes. So between UX and UI, we'll be focusing more on UI in this video and in future tutorials in this learning path, but it's important to keep in mind the connections between these. Another thing we talk about a lot with app development, and that you may have heard about before, is the accessibility of the apps and websites that we create, specifically that these should be just as usable by people with disabilities in terms of how they perceive, understand, navigate, and interact with the technology. So this includes techniques like making sure the app can be navigated using a keyboard or a screen reader, including alt text that describes the images and the other media on the site, and making sure that text is easily readable with high enough contrast between the text and its background. This is all crucially important, and all of it helps to improve your app's usability, not just for users with disabilities, but for all users. And at the same time, when we talk about usability, this is something even broader. Even if an app meets accessibility standards, it could still have usability issues. For example, if the user has trouble finding the functionality that they need, or if they have to go between too many parts of the interface to complete a task. So accessibility and usability really complement each other in terms of improving the UX and UI of your app. So what does all of this look like when you're designing and developing mapping apps specifically? Here are a few things to keep in mind. For mapping apps in general, we can start to categorize the interfaces in two ways, map-centric and non-map-centric. You've probably come across both of these already, even if you weren't aware of it. And it's a good way to start thinking about this idea of different types of interfaces being useful for different purposes. For example, map-centric design is what you'd see in a program like ArcGIS Pro, the ArcGIS Online Map Viewer, or ArcGIS Field Maps on mobile. With this, the map is front and center for everything that you do with the app, whether that's editing data, changing symbology, or running an analysis tool. At the same time, we have non-map-centric apps, where the map is one part of the interface but isn't necessarily the main focus of the app. So this includes Survey123, where the user can add a location to a map as part of a larger questionnaire. Or ArcGIS Hub Pages, where the map might be embedded in a more descriptive web page. Michael Geig, who is the UI UX lead for Esri's professional services team, has a really great map UI pattern site that goes into a lot more detail on design patterns like these. The site includes different types of app layouts you can use, ideas like when to display attributes in a pop-up versus a panel, and patterns like starting with the search workflow if people only need to look at one specific area on the map. I'd highly recommend spending time looking through this site while you're designing apps and thinking about which of the patterns and techniques are most suitable for what your app needs to do. Another thing we need to think about when we're developing mapping apps is the findability and discoverability of the features in the app, since mapping apps can contain a lot of functionality. The findability refers to how easy it is for users to find the features that they're specifically looking for, and discoverability refers to how easy it is to find other helpful features that they didn't necessarily know about. And this is important because often we think an app becomes easier to use if we make the visual design simpler and more minimalist. And this is true to an extent, but making the design too minimalist can make it more difficult for users to find the features they need. As a basic example, if your users will need to interpret the symbology of your web map, like this map of the 2016 Brexit referendum, you'll want to make sure that they can access the map legend easily. Now, depending on the users you've designed the app for, they might not be familiar with the legend tools in GIS software. So if the legend is one of several buttons on the app's menu bar, or if it's in a drop-down menu, the users might not be able to find the legend easily. Or worse, they might not realize that the app contains a legend at all. 
So you can improve this by having the legend display on screen by default and allowing the user to close it if they need more space. Or, thinking about providing people with a clear entry point for using the app, we could get a bit more creative. In this case, we could create a more informative widget where we include the legend as a screenshot. So we need to think about which tools the user needs to use the most frequently to achieve their goals, and what the easiest ways are for them to find these tools on screen, such as with toolbars, menus, buttons, and panels. For example, toolbars work well for programs with a lot of functionality, and drop-down menus work well for functions that don't need to be used as often. So, for simpler apps, you might focus on having clearly labeled buttons within the interface instead or showing the main functionality in panels by default. This, in turn, goes back to the need to understand your users first, and know what to prioritize for them, and to test the design with these users as you go, rather than relying on your own guesswork. And even if you're using one of Esri's app templates or app builders, rather than writing an app from scratch, you can still apply principles like these to improve the usability of your app. From a UI design standpoint, you'll want to consider which option makes your app's functionality available to users most clearly. You can see some of the options for developing web apps below. It's often worthwhile to think through the design first, to make some sketches and come up with different design ideas, even before you start using one of the builders or templates. We'll take a look at this sort of design process in the next video for this learning path. For example, if you need a simpler app that needs to do one thing and do it well, you might want to start with the configurable apps and instant apps in ArcGIS Online, each of which has already been designed by Esri for a specific purpose. If your app needs to focus on storytelling using maps and multimedia, you can use ArcGIS Story Maps. Or, if your users need to visualize data using maps, charts, and custom lists, you can use ArcGIS dashboards. ArcGIS Web App Builder lets you put together an app by selecting from a collection of widgets with different GIS tools, and by choosing between different themes and layout options. You can make these widgets available in toolbars and panels, and have certain widgets appear on screen by default. ArcGIS Experience Builder is similar to the Web App Builder, but lets you create much more customized app interfaces and define how the different interface components interact with each other. You can create map-centric apps like with the Web App Builder, and you can also create non-map-centric apps where the map is part of a larger overall experience. And with languages like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, you can create something totally customized to what your users need to do. In this case, it becomes even more important to think through the design first. You can also start by building one of the configurable apps, or a web app builder app or experience builder app, and customizing the code for these. Also, a couple of months ago in April 2021, Esri released the Calcite design system, which provides you with user interface components that you can include in your own web apps. These are the same UI components that Esri uses in ArcGIS Online and the ArcGIS API for JavaScript. Esri also provides advice on when each component should be used relative to other components. We'll take a closer look at the Calcite design system in future tutorials on creating app prototypes and designing web mapping apps. There's a wealth of information online about UI and UX design in general, but if you'd like to learn more about UI design for mapping apps in particular, I'd highly recommend these presentations by Michael Geig and Alan Laframboise from Esri Inc. The links for these presentations are in the video description below. The first one, UI UX Best Practices for Designing Stunning Web Apps, goes into a lot of detail about the overall user experience design process, including how to create apps that solve the right problem as well as some of the design patterns we looked at earlier. The Design Lab by Al Laframboise discusses these too, as well as some user research methods and the visual aspects of design. And something else I've found really helpful as I've learned more about UI design 
is the user interface guidelines from companies such as Microsoft, Apple, or Google. Like the Calcite website from Esri, these give you sort of a palette that you can keep in mind when designing interfaces, and they help you learn what works and what doesn't from a user's standpoint based on these companies' experience. There's a good set of links to different design guidelines at the link below and in the video description compiled by the software company Balsamic. So in this video, you've had an introduction to user experience design and user interface design and the differences between these, as well as how these ideas apply when you're designing mapping apps. In the next video for this learning path, We'll take a look at how to design mapping apps by creating sketches, wireframes, and prototypes before actually starting to develop the app, and how to test your app designs with users. On behalf of all of us in the Education and Research Group here at Esri Canada, thanks for watching.